don't tell you about on TripAdvisor. I now can't hear anything, so I'm probably shouting right now. Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is First World Traveller. I'm back doing travel videos, wonderful. And in case you hadn't noticed, I'm currently in Hong Kong. Now I'm doing these videos slightly differently in that there is so much to do in Hong Kong. So I'll be splitting this playlist into various parts. I will link that up the top. So coming to a city like Hong Kong, not only for a first timer in Hong Kong like me, but also for a first time traveller, can be extremely daunting because Hong Kong is massive, busy, bustling, all those sorts of words and it can be quite scary when you arrive in somewhere like Hong Kong. So this video is all about the basics and everything you need to know before you even get to Hong Kong to make your arrival in Hong Kong a lot easier. So firstly, the airport. The airport is massive, but when you get off the plane, you will need to get a train to immigration. That's how big the airport is. Now, there are a few stops on this train line. So depending on what gate you get off your plane, you may have to go through a couple of stations before you can get to immigration. Make sure you listen to all the announcements on the train, which are in English. So how do you get from the airport into the city? Well, there are a number of options. You can get a taxi, you can get a bus. What I did was get the Airport Express. The most advisable thing to do around public transport in Hong Kong is to get an octopus card. This is basically like a Oyster card. It costs 150 Hong Kong dollars, which is the equivalent of about 14 English pounds and 50 pence. This is February 2017. Now, when you get the octopus card, you will also have to pay 50 Hong Kong dollars as a deposit, which you then get back as a refund when you return the card before you leave Hong Kong. So make sure you return this card. Now, the octopus card works on numerous public transport in Hong Kong, from the Airport Express, the MTR, basically the tube, trams etc the only thing that it doesn't work on is taxis additionally using the octopus card is a lot cheaper than paying for single trips as always now the thing you need to do before you even get to hong kong is download an app by someone called mapway now i download these quite a lot basically they give you tube maps metro maps really good maps of the whole system so you can see exactly where you need to go the MTR is very clean, etc., as you would expect from someone like Hong Kong. Okay, so this is Sim Sha Sui MRT station, which is the closest one to where I'm staying. So let's give you a little tour of an MRT station and how to use your octopus card. Wonderful. Behind me are the gates where you can use your octopus card. Let's go. There we go, job done. Simple. Just swipe your card on the thingy bomb. signs behind me are very helpful so if you are going to Peking Road for example right there then you can see which exit you need to exit from which is very helpful you don't get that a lot in a lot of MRT stations. Now to travel around in Hong Kong you will use Hong Kong Central MTR station quite a lot that's where I've spent my whole life here since I've been in Hong Kong but the good thing is as you can see behind me there are signs galore they're in English so just follow the signs you can easily find your way around. Okay, so visas and currency. If you're from the UK, you will get a free visa 
when you enter Hong Kong, you will not get a stamp in your passport, which is a bit odd. You will get a little printed card with your name on, telling you the date in which you leave the country. Simple. Currency. So currency is very simple, exchange rate wise, especially if, if you are from England. The currency is Hong Kong dollars. Now 100 Hong Kong dollars is the equivalent of about 10 English pounds. Again, this is February 2017. So it's very easy to work out the exchange rate. You just add another zero. Fantastic. Okay, in terms of getting around in Hong Kong and looking for things to do, TripAdvisor is obviously a fantastic tool where you can research things and plan your time in Hong Kong if you have limited time. Another thing you can do is download this app over to the left there, which is Hong Kong Tours. Now, you can get this on Google Play and I imagine Apple Store, I don't have an iPhone. Basically, this app has similar things for lots of other cities as well and it will give you many ideas about things to do and walking tours and it will tell you how long each walking tour takes things like that so if you're lazy or just generally crap at planning things to do when you're in a new place use this app because it's really useful to find some really interesting things to do in Hong Kong so when you get off the MCR make sure you're acting streetwise you're walking with a purpose and you look like you come from Hong Kong because that is what you need to do when you're traveling now one thing you will see especially if you're staying in Kowloon which is where I'm staying on Nathan Road there will be a number of Indian Asian men on the streets who will jump on you asking if you've got a guest house if you've got a hostel I can do this place cheaper than the place you've booked they'll also be selling you fake Rolex watches marijuana cocaine obviously do not buy any of those things just go to your hostel that you've booked before you got there because you are not a never booker. What's a never booker? You will see that in my What Types of Backpack video at the top there. The thing that you will be struck with with Hong Kong hostels is that they are, the best way to describe it is compact. Very, very small and tiny. Let's have a look around my hostel. You'd think this room might be for one person, but no. Four people could fit in this tiny room. Yes, four people could fit in this tiny room, unbelievably. This is the bathroom. I say bathroom, I mean cupboard. So toilet and the shower. Let's get in the shower. Bloody hell. Literally tiny. So the shower water hits the door. That's how ridiculous this place is, but it's typical of Hong Kong hostels. Now let's just try and get up on the bed. This is an ordeal in itself because as you can see at the top, there's like a thing of ceiling that juts out, giving you concussion every time you hit your head on it. Oh, Jesus Christ, so. Ugh. Right, you've got a duck under the piece of marble, whatever it is. Oh, Christ, my legs. I've just knocked the fan off the wall, never mind. But I'm on the 16th floor. Wonderful. So, and, now I'm in bed. Bang. Now Hong Kong is of course very expensive, so how do you get by on a budget in Hong Kong? Food, let's start with food. Places on the street, obviously like anywhere in Asia, will be cheaper than going to a shop. There are places like Marks and Spencer, which are ridiculously expensive. There's also 7-Eleven, which is kind of in the middle. It's more expensive than places off the street, but less expensive than places like Marks and Spencer. A bottle of water on the street will cost you five dollars which is about 50 pence, slightly less than that. In 7-Eleven it'll be about eight dollars. It could be anything up to fifteen dollars in Marks and Spencer so just make sure you are being clever about where you get your food and drink etc. So as you can see there signs in Hong Kong are generally in Chinese, Cantonese and also English, so it makes getting around Hong Kong very easy. Another tip for first timers in Hong Kong, just be wary if you do smoke, you will see these signs everywhere. The laws around smoking are a lot stricter here than in somewhere like London, so you will get a 1500 Hong Kong dollar fine if you're caught smoking, so just be careful. your basics done of Hong Kong click on the playlist to the right you'll go to the next video which is all about things to do on Hong Kong Island catch you later